Gone to the grocery store to grab a gallon of milk or snag some steaks for dinner recently? Well, you might have encountered these guys, paid signature gatherers. All right, Jerry, where do I sign? Former San Diego mayor and Chamber of Commerce CEO Jerry Sanders helped man the tables outside of a Vons in Carmel Valley on a recent sunny Sunday. Thank you very much. Hey, I was a good job. Thank you. He was trying to get voters to help undo the city council's new developer fees. Sponsored by an ex-mayor right there, Jerry Sanders. Uh, I like taxes. Sanders says the rise in referendums comes from a growing partisan divide and an unwillingness by the city council to negotiate with business. When the business community or any other community feels like they have no avenue to, to have those conversations, then I think you see things like referendums pop up. And the Supreme Court said that's one of our most precious rights. It's stronger than any other uh, right in our process, to be honest, because, and that's what the courts have said. But it's the initiative to create your own legislation to bypass the city council, the recall to remove the city council or legislature, and then the referendum, if you don't like something that, that they did, you got a period of time in which you can get together a bunch of signatures and you can overrule them. City Attorney Jan Goldsmith admits that even so, the referendum process is far from perfect. To understand that, let's go back to the Vons in Carmel Valley. And a lot of times, the good folks that are at some of these tables they don't tell you exactly what you're signing. On these tables, a big sign reads, Stop Higher Taxes. That's a pretty easy sell, because not a lot of people are all, yay, more taxes. So anything that means less taxes is good. But there's a problem. Right, They're running around calling it a jobs tax. Well, if it was a tax, it would be illegal. We've given an opinion, it's not a tax, it's a fee. And every time I hear that, I kind of, ah. But that's their right. That's their opinion. Can you help us stop the job stop? Yes, yes, definitely. Oh, great. Right but getting your opinion, your particular take on the facts out to the public, that takes money these days. Mesa College political scientist Carl Luna says the referendum process has drifted from its progressive roots. Thank you. When referendums were introduced in California in the early 20th century, they were part of the progressive movement, giving the average citizen a chance to get their voice heard in Sacramento and in their local city governments. I have an expression, when you try to limit the power of powerful people, they'll use their power to get around the limits. In other words, referendums aren't being used by the little guy anymore. Thank you very much for signing us. At $5 a signature, gatherers are motivated to sell, and someone needs to pay them. When you look at the issues that have received challenges through the referendum process, I think it's fair to say that each of those issues are relatively progressive issues uh, that have been challenged by fairly large, fairly well-moneyed interests. Interim Mayor Todd Gloria helped champion the developer fee through the city council. He says he isn't anti-business. No one can ever come into my council chambers and say that my colleagues and I do not stand for helping to grow business. But we have to do that with some balance. And I think that it's the balance, that's that, 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 the equilibrium that's being shifted um, to, to, I think, more equity that you see people pushing back against. San Diego Housing Federation Susan Riggs agrees. She says now that big business no longer has a complete hold on San Diego City Council, yeah. they have the cash to push back. The referendum process is just another example of you know, throwing money at the problem to try and get what, you know, what the opposition would like to, to see in an outcome. But the reality is, you know, I think that the irony of this referendum process is, you know, in some ways it's being couched as being more democratic. But the amount of money that it costs to put on a referendum, I think, is a really good indication of um, how the inequity would continue to play out if we allow you know, the referendum process to be abused in this way. Maybe on the way out, hon. But former mayor and Chamber of Commerce CEO Jerry Sanders says the referendum process is in no way an abuse of the system. It's using the system as it was intended to create necessary checks and balances. Take the developer's fee, which he is trying to overturn. He says all sides want the same end goal, more affordable housing. But to single out one group of people and say, you're going to be the ones who pay for affordable housing from now on, doesn't make a lot of sense to me, and especially to single out people who are actually creating the jobs. And Sanders says when the city council doesn't get it right, it should be up to the voters to decide. City attorney Jan Goldsmith agrees. Your vote and 
your support for either a candidate or a direct democracy is, is your most valuable tool as a citizen. Don't give it away that, that cheaply. Where do we sign? Right here. As for whether the referendum process needs reforming, both Goldsmith and interim mayor Todd Gloria say that's something they will take a look at. Or, you know, citizens could always do something about it. Yes, of course. With a referendum. Sunday Dirks, KPBS News.